Hello and welcome to the Voluntary Virtues Network. I am your host, Mr. Ancap, and this is my show, The State Sucks. So it's tough continuing a show like this. I found myself having difficulty finding new topics. And it's really tough topping war, which was my show for last week, but I, I finally got it. And this one is just, it's a big one. It's a beautiful one. It is regulations. That's right. The gun of legal malice the state uses to find a way to force itself into nonviolent agreements between the common folk like you and I. Now, regulations, at least state-run regulations, and that's an important distinction to make, are bullshit, and the state is sucky at doing them. Because this is the one area I find that the state is, while not openly honest, it is falsifiably true that the reason regulations exist is not for the stated purpose. The stated purpose of regulations is to protect people, right? Because everyone knows, without the, the gun of government in the room, people are in danger. Unless, you know, you're in a country that gets drone striked. Or, you know, you have a plant that the state will use a SWAT team to kick your ass over. Or, you know, you're, you're, you cross the wrong street and a cop has had a bit of a bad day. But uh, aside from all that, without regulations, you're going to die whenever you eat a hamburger. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the real reason that regulations exist in the market, and this is very important, is just extortion. It is just in order for the, the government to take a piece of that pie. Take a piece of the pie not only to be seen through, like, they, they still get their piece through, like, taxation, right? That needs to be made very clear. You know, you got income tax, you have, um, you know, capital gains tax, you have, you have numerous taxes. Um, and then there's, uh, there's employers who hire employees, right? So you know how, you know, you and I, we work, we have to pay, like, Social Security, Medicare, all that shit. Our employer also has to pay that shit on our behalf, right? Hiring people is a lot more expensive than seven twenty-five an hour. You know, have a have a talk with anyone who actually does hiring. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a few hoops you got to jump through. But yeah, so regulations exist. So, are regulations a new thing? Was there ever a beautiful time wherein the state did not seek to capitalize on the trade of others? No. Uh, I I have been looking at human history, at least in Western civilizations. My Eastern history is not as refined. But uh, I, as we go back to like Sparta and Rome, which is the which is the two civilizations, the oldest ones I find interesting, and that's what's warranted my my uh, inspection of. They had massive regulations on trade, and it only gets worse as the state grows. By the way, like most things in life, the state uh, never you know folds; it always double downs on its own bullshit. So yes, uh, trade has always been regulated. Uh, the English regulated trade, you know, uh, you can look at the East India Trade Company, that was nothing more than fucking fascism, when you're on to get down to it. Uh, yeah, so massive, massive regulations on trade, what could be traded, who could trade what, where and when, so on and so forth. So bringing it back to the United States for a moment, the, the only goal of regulation is more money, right? That needs to be made very clear. And what you notice is, in regulation, the more regulations, the more the more the government eye is on a market, the more they're seeking to extort and control and dominate it. Right? So what's the most meager thing? What is the what is the least little bitty thing the government regulates? And I would argue it's lemonade stands. Right? I mean you can do some Google searches to find out like there's numerous states and numerous stories wherein uh, kids with lemonade stands are getting shut down because they didn't have the, the proper licensees and permits. Right? Like it's like what? You didn't have $300 to get the, the business license and the food and drink permits? Bad kids. Bad. Of course, I assume if they had the money for a, you know, permit for a lemonade stand and the licensees, that um, they wouldn't have had a lemonade stand. I mean, I, I had a slushy stand when I was a kid at some point. You know, sold little, like, little slushies. Don't think I ever made 300 bucks. I would be amazed if I ever made 50 bucks. if we're all going to be open and honest with each other. So, so that's interesting. But what's funny is that only happens if they sell the lemonade. Those same kids in that same place, standing next to those same cops, if they were giving away lemonade, right? It needs to be made very clear. If they were giving it away for free, they would not be in trouble at all. It is only when they profit from their entrepreneurial goals that the state wants a piece of that pie, right? Sort of like how... Um, Sort of like how the, the, the mob enforcers want a bit of that protection money. Because that's all the regulation is. It's protection money. right? It's a little bit of a shakedown. 
Now, the stated goal, of course, is to protect people. Those little girls will poison you, you know, with their lemonade. Of course, the fact they don't get involved unless money's being made shows their truer motives. But it only gets worse as we grow up, as we get bigger. You know, uh, the next big place I find is actual, you know, restaurants and, you know, food establishments. Wherein the state will come in, they'll do inspections, they'll do this, they'll do that. It's just like the lemonade stand, just with an extra load of bullshit. And so what do they say? They say, oh, well, you're not this clean, you're not like this, you're not like that, etc. Now, of course, the state sets unrealistically high standards. Right? There is no, there is no place that serves a lot of people that can meet the state's refined standards, because they can always find something. Right? Uh, I would not be at all surprised if numerous restaurants and fast food establishments, etc., had like a protocol. If they see like the, the guy coming to inspect them, like, clean everything! You know, um, because it is impossible in a food environment to keep everything polished, brimming with cleanliness. Right? And that needs to be made very clear, because that's the standards. Right? That's the standards the, uh, the, the U.S. government uses. Now, of course, what do you think would be a good standard for whether or not a place is, is good versus bad. How many motherfuckers are being poisoned? Right? That's a fair, solid assessment. But the problem is, you don't need government for that. When motherfuckers start getting poisoned, they already know what's happening. The fucking restaurant has to shut down because, you know, they're poisoning people. If it, if it gets too widespread, they'll never recover from the PR disaster, etc., etc. So the government creates new and inventive reasons to need to exist in order to shake people down. Now, of course, this also goes into the food, licensees, and so on. But then we keep climbing the ladder. We keep going up the rung. And what you notice is the more regulations that come in, the more malicious the state becomes. Right? Then you see anything to do with contracting, construction, etc. You know, having to do with, um, with building things. Now, this is where it gets fucking ludicrous. Okay, there are a million... I mean, we're talking just city ordinances and city codes, right? Wherein you can't build... Like, like, let's say you own property, right? Let's say you own, like, a like a big piece of property, and you want to build another house on your land, right? Maybe you have a guest coming over. Maybe you have a, maybe you have a pal. Um, <clears throat> you go, and you say, hey, I want to build this house. The city will be like, no, 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 you can't have, you can't have more than one house on your property, which, why? I don't know. But they'll force you to jump through a lot of paperwork, a lot of hoops, just to turn your, your property into a legal subdivision, Right? That's right. You want your own fucking, you want your own little little community? Just try to build another fucking house on your land. Boom. Doesn't apply to trailers because it's arbitrary. It's bullshit. But yeah, so you have to do, you have to jump through these types of hoops. But it's not just that. There's plenty of codes on, you know, what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do. There are some cities where you have to go get the proper permits if you want to bust down a wall in your own home, right? And of course, this is all just the government keeping a tab on you, finding a way to get some of that money. Uh, then there's, of course, you know, workman's comp and so on. And for any of you who, who can go talk to people who do construction, do contracting, ask them how much workman's comp is. Uh, you know, to cover workers in case they fall and so on. Uh, they will tell you it's fucking ludicrous. It's completely insane. Right? I mean, there's, there's no one starting out in the contracting industry. It's sort of like if, if, you know, if you had to pay the government off, like, let's say, just hypothetically, a few million dollars before you're allowed to open business, you'd watch mom and pop businesses die in the streets. Right, workman's comp is ridiculously expensive. There's a joke among contractors and construction workers that, you know, if um, if you're working, you fall off like a roof or some high building, you're fired before you hit the fucking ground. You know, because I can't fucking afford that shit. But it only gets worse. And then when you get to the really big cities with, like, building inspectors, right, where when you're putting up a building, they're fucking there, man. That is a shakedown racket if ever there was one. Right, you know, they'll say, they'll halt you up if you don't pay them off, like saying, oh, well, you can't work because you're not doing this right, or they'll find nitpicky things, because there's never, if, if, if a building inspector wants to fuck you over, there's more than enough ways I can do it. Much like how a cop can follow you for an hour, they'll find you doing something illegal. Anything illegal, they can get you on it. Right, it needs to be made very clear. And then there is, then there's the biggest stuff, the biggest market the government likes to regulate, and that is stuff like the drug war, like prostitution, stuff they outlaw, but there's still a market demand, so the state seeks to profit. Right, the drug war being the biggest current example of all. Right, so the drug war offers the government a massive amount of power and wealth. How so? Well, first off, the CIA funds itself from from drug sales. Right, that needs to be made very clear. Uh, there, there's been this long-standing relationship between the U.S. federal government and drug cartels, wherein if the drug cartels 
pay them off, then they'll allow them to keep existing until they, of course, grow tired and get new ones, much like how we treat uh, leaders in the Middle East. You know, you're, you're our buddy for a while there, Saddam, but eventually we are going to fucking murder you and replace you with another tool for our own ends. But outside of that borderline conspiratorial views, there's also the inordinate power it gives to the police state. Right? There's a reason cops get really pissed off when the conversation of drug legalization comes up, because it's such an easy fuck people over tool. You know, you get the drug sniffing dog, smells drugs in the car, boom, you got an arrest. You know, uh, there's, there's some cities, some counties, some states, wherein, you know, property used for criminal activity is seized by the police. Right? You know, they'll, they'll get the property and they'll sell it off for money. This is where the drug war really makes some good bank. Right? Because the cops find a blunt in your car, they own your car. They find a blunt in your house, they own your house. And this has the unintended effect of making uh, fighting a criminal prosecution difficult. Right? Because you quickly find yourself in financial, you know, dire straits when you lost your car, when you've lost your house. Right? So it, 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 it's another boon to that prison population. Right? Because the state targets people who can't afford it. Right? Uh, we, we have moved on from being a racially divided justice system to be a class system justice system, wherein if you don't have the money to repel the state, you're fucked. You're fucking fucked. Um, and that's what happens with these with these types of things. You know, they come in, they take your car, they take your house, and they say, oh, by the way, you gotta pay for this fucking legal defense, because we have the money of the state behind us, so we're never gonna fucking go broke doing it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, you have regulations uh, with regards to the drug war, and it's completely fucking... It's nutty. It's fucking nutty. Right, and that's just, that's just a broad strokes of regulations. I could go in on it. But the, the fact of the matter is, the government cannot protect you, and I think we all know this. If McDonald's wanted to poison every one of its customers tomorrow, and of course it's a, it's a, it's a I believe it's a franchise, so it's like manager-owned, manager-owned sort of thing. But let's say one McDonald's wanted to, wanted to poison everyone. There's not a fucking thing stopping them from doing it, right? Uh, if, if I run, for example, a fireworks stand, you know, and of course that, that I guarantee has its own regulations and bullshit about oh, we don't want you blowing up the kids, blah, 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 because it's all about what they can sell to the fear-mongering public, right? The, the, the public that needs to be afraid. Oh, God. Nothing's stopping that from happening at all. It's much like how, it's much like with, you know, gun-free zones, right? No gun-free zone has ever stopped a gun-wielding psychopath. They never saw that fucking sign that said gun-free zone and said, shucks, swipe or no swiping. I'll just go to that local police station where guns are allowed and do my tyranny. No, it's bullshit. So, um, <clears throat> so yeah, uh, there's nothing stopping any business. And why don't businesses stop that? Let's talk about that for a second. Because there is a regulation outside of the state. And that's the market forces. It's market regulation. There's a reason McDonald's does not fucking try to poison its customers. You know, there's a reason why the fucking chicks at the lemonade stand don't try to fucking kill everyone. There is no profit to be made in killing and harming people. At least for a restaurant. Uh, the state gets away with it fucking with pretty much everything they do, but that's, again, legal impunity. But, uh, yeah. Right? If, if, if McDonald's, for example, poisons people, there's Wendy's, there's Burger King, there's Pals, there's this, there's fucking that. Right? There's plenty of fast food places to go around who don't want to poison their customers. You know? If, if, if this car company wants to make a car that fucking... That, that doesn't start, there's a million other fucking car companies willing to give you a better car at a better price guaranteed. You know, it needs to be made very clear. And that's how market regulations work. Because, you know, you talk to these people, and we're going get to get away from the state for a second, give a little voluntary 101 here. This is what happens when you talk to people when they bring up my roads. Right? Oh, without the government, who will build the roads? Whoever the fuck needs roads. Right? Some people need roads. Other people will build that road. Voluntary agreements will abound. Fucking yard sale. Right? I'm sure you guys have seen the Facebook meme with that with that angry young fellow who he sees a yard sale and he's like, Anarchy! Anarchy! My regulations! You know, because that's all it is. It's free trade. Right? It's, I got this, you got that, let's have a little conversation about, you know, helping each other out. And it's... <clears throat> and it's sad most people don't get this, because... And I think you found this frustrating as well. This is how we work almost entirely in our daily lives. We have voluntary agreements. You guys are here watching this. I don't know anyone putting a fucking gun to your head. No one's making me do this. No one's got a fucking gun to my head. I know Michael Shanklin didn't send a fucking hit squad to make me record this video. I'm doing it because I fucking want to. 
Right? I got some message. I got some ideas to put out there. You guys will like it. You guys will fucking dislike it. You'll find it funny. You'll think I'm weird looking. Some of you will say I look like Steve Buscemi. I get that a lot. But there's no violence that needs to be happened here. If a disagreement was to come up, right? If, if it's a problem with my vulgarity, which is why I'm at 7.30 now, 8.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific? Yeah. Right? That's why my time has shifted. Right? That's why, um... That's why... I don't do well with the after school specials. But, yes. We can talk about this. We can have a fucking exchange. And if an impasse can't be reached, we'll just cut ties. Hey, dude, you're fired. Or, you know, I'll leave for intellectual differences and I'll go open my own show like Glenn Beck and cry once in a while for the viewers. I can cry. But the gun of the state is, is, a, is an antiquated idea. Right? Again, much like war, it's a result of our own uh, survivalist predatory instinctual past which our rational minds have long since grown out of right we we have we have developed an ability to regulate trade through commercialization and free enterprise now of course we're going to talk about one more thing with regulations and this is not about how the state profits but this is how corporations come about because everyone wants to talk about how corporations are evil you guys probably heard this people say government's not bad corporations are bad no 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 no, the most evil corporation is only a result of government uh, intervention in the market. What do I mean by that? Well, there's two two stories I want to tell you about. Two two little things. First off, it's toy companies, right? So there's a regulation in toy companies wherein you don't want lead-based toys, right? Because China's filled with lead. They breathe it. That's what I've been told. I went to public school, so I know these things. But, um, so yeah, so lead-based toys, don't want babies to die, fear-mongering, fear-mongering, fear-mongering. So now toy companies have to get, like, certified. They have to get, like, that fucking rubber stamp from this government-supported place uh, before toys can be sold here. Well, what happens with this is that the big toy companies, right, they just, they write a check to daddy government, and they get to bypass it. Right? They get that rubber stamp free of charge, virtually, compared to their competition who has to keep paying for that inspection every single toy shipment. And so what does this do? Well, this creates a problem in the market wherein this toy company, because they have lobbied the state for additional power and legal exemption, have now been able to undercut their competition because their competition has this constant need to pay, whereas big bad toy company only has to do it once in a while. Need to be made very clear. And the other method is the FDA. Oh, now FDA is a fucking atrocious organization, isn't it? I mean, I, I guarantee you don't go a day. Maybe you do at, at worst, you do not go a week without looking at the television and hearing about some new drug, apparently, like, kills people. Call this number if you want to sue a motherfucker. Right? You guys have, you guys have heard of it? Because that's what the FDA does. Right? The FDA creates problems in the market. So, so what does the FDA do? Well, it says that it's going to make sure the drugs are safe so that they can be sold to the general public and so on and so forth. The problem is it quickly becomes a shakedown racket, wherein drugs that are that are great won't be sold unless you can pay off the FDA whatever millions they want. Or drugs that are great, but you can't outpay your competition who's already paid up with the FDA who doesn't want it. Like, let's say I'm evil, bad medical corporation, and I don't want anyone selling the cure for cancer, so I pay up with the FDA. Then this bum fuck who gives a shit comes up with the cure for cancer, goes to the FDA, and the FDA will shut him down on my behalf. Right? There's plenty of drugs over there in Europe, right, doing life-saving shit, helping with diseases that we only mitigate over here, their symptoms, and the FDA won't approve them. Why? Those motherfuckers won't pay them off. Yeah, it's just it's simple facts. And even if they can't pay them off, there's instances, of course, where big, bad, evil corporations use the FDA, because they're paid up, shut it down. It's the same thing with patents. Right? Same thing with patents, intellectual property. This is all just the state. Right? One part extortion racket, other part shutting down free enterprise for the sake of the guys who have paid off. Now, everyone will be saying, well, what if those evil corporations didn't pay off? Then their competition would. The government very, very much so existing in the market causes the need for, for fascism. Because if Corporation A doesn't pay up and become big and evil... Corporation B will, or C, or D, because there's no way to survive fighting off the force of the state when it intervenes in the market. And just to be clear, in the last hundred years, there's only like, what, three, four corporations that have existed over the last century with government involvement in the market? That's pretty damn, that's pretty damn sensational. You know, it's good 
That's good information when people think the market would be filled with monopolies. Fucking moronic. But yeah, so the, the, the FDA. Now, how might, you know, drugs be dealt with in a free market? Well, I have an idea. I do. I do. I've, I've thought about this. You know, so co companies make drugs. Then they'll go to some testing lab, probably multiple, that are very reputable with hospitals. Because hospitals have to be the ones to take it, right? If hospitals aren't taking shit, the doctors ain't taking shit, the pharmacies ain't taking shit. Right? So, it gets certified by these testing centers. Boom. Done. Sell them to hospitals. If a testing center proves to be bullshit, fucking hold those motherfuckers accountable. Uh, as another line of defense, of course, you know, testing center authorizes it, send it to hospitals, they'll run their own tests. You know, you just, you keep breaking down the system, because no one wants that lawsuit. That needs to be made clear. Nobody wants to fucking get sued because they've been killing motherfuckers. Right? So, you know, keep, keep the test, keep the test. Look for any fucking shadiness. And of course, there's a huge incentive not to be shady from that process, because there's multiple levels. The drug company doesn't want to be shady, doesn't want to sell an inferior product because they'll get blacklisted by everyone. The drug testing company doesn't want to get found to be shady because they'll get blacklisted by everyone. The hospital above everyone else doesn't want to because not only will they be blacklisted by everyone else, they'll be blacklisted by fucking patients and shit, and they'll open up the corner of their market to other hospitals showing up and being like, hey patients, we don't want to poison you. People hate greed and self-interest. Which, to be fair, in, ex in excess, like anything else, does cause problems. But greed, self-interest, wanting to, 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 to make our lives better is what drives us not to dick people over. Right? You know, everyone talks about how much they hate stupid people, right? I hate stupid people. You hate stupid people. There's a reason we don't go door-to-door -door shooting them. You know why? Because eventually they'll shoot back and we'll die and where will we be in life? Nowhere. Okay, this is a big thing with the non-aggression principle. It's just common sense. Don't initiate force. Right? That's just self-interest. Right? There's no... People like to bring up there's some, some, some deep-seated morality, and for some people there might be. But the, what makes the NAP so damn useful is the fact that it's not built around morality, but so much about self-interest. Just that. It's bare-bones survival instinct 101 for the modern era. Long gone are the days where you could go pillage and rape and murder and steal and all that shit. Right? Now is the days of cooperation, because if you don't... Everyone's gonna fucking ostracize you. You're gonna get that red A on your shirt, and you're gonna be fucking desolate. So that's my video. So went a bit all over the place, you know. But I, I do what I do for you guys. But what I like about regulations is next week I'm gonna talk to you about one particular regulatory market where I find people to be very confused, to get easily misled because I haven't done the proper research or I haven't talked to the right people or whatever the fuck it is. I'll be bashing Paul Krugman again because I know he comes up here. Um. But I'm going to talk about the healthcare market in the United States. And I'll, I'll briefly touch on places like Canada, places like Japan, etc. But mainly the U.S. of A. Because people always like to bash the U.S. healthcare market and they like to blame evil insurance corporations. But as with most things, the state is the root of all evil. And as such, the healthcare market in the United States is no exception to this. So I'll, I'll get in on that uh, next week when I, when, I, when I do the healthcare market regulations or healthcare regulations. What I'll think of some pompous fucking you know, flamboyant title. But anyway guys, you know, uh, like, favorite, subscribe, let me know what you think in the comment section below.